Now we're going to be finding a percent of increase or decrease. This is Lesson 12C, and of course Lesson 12A and B are linked in the description with other helpful videos. Some of the percent problems will ask us to find the rate that an amount has changed over time. And this change might be an increase or decrease of the base amount. To solve these, we follow these three things. We subtract to find the difference between the new amount and the original amount. And we divide the difference by the original amount. Then we convert the decimal to a percent. It's pretty easy. Three steps. What percent increase of $15 per hour is $15.45 per hour? The first thing we do is subtract. We do $15.45 minus the $15, and it's just $0.45, cents, right? 0.45. The second thing we do is divide the difference by the original amount. So the 0.45 is the difference. We divide it by the original amount of $15, and we get 0 0.03. Now we change it to a percent. We move the decimal point back or get rid of it and put in a percentage sign, and we have 3% increase. All right, so we're going to do a few of these. Find the percent of increase or decrease. The original amount is 200. The new amount is 220. Now, this is an increase because the new amount's larger than the original amount, isn't it? So we know right away that it's a percent increase. What we do is we subtract to find the difference between these two numbers. 220 minus 200 is 20. Then we take this 20 and divide it by that original number, and we get a 0.1. It needs to be changed to a percent, so we move the decimal back two hops, one, two. It leaves an open place value that we can put a zero as a placeholder. We put a percentage sign on, and we have a 10% increase. See? Let's try it again. The original amount is 76. The new amount is 95. So, because the new amount is larger, we know it's going to be an increase, right? It's going to be a percentage increase. So, we find the difference. 95 minus 76 equals 19. We take that 19 and divide it by the 76 original amount. We get a 0.25. We change it to a percentage. We move the decimal point back and put on a percent sign, and we get a 25% increase. So, this could be for like a problem that says Dave got a 76 on his test, after studying and retaking the test, he scored 95. What percentage increase was his score? It was 25% increase. See? Let's try another one. The original amount is 200 is I'm sorry, is 480 and the new amount is 288. We find the difference. We do 480 minus 288. We could do that real quick on our calculator and get a 192. Then we take this 192 the difference, and divide it by the original amount, the 480. We're going to get a 0.4. We can change that to a percentage by going over two hops and putting a zero in the missing place value and get a 40% decrease. We know it's a decrease because the new amount's smaller. See? Now pay attention to where the purple number is because that's the original number, the base amount. Notice that it's in the front when I'm subtracting here. And it's in the back when I'm subtracting here, and it's in the back when I'm subtracting here. Now, why is that? Well, because I'm subtracting and I don't want negative numbers, so I'm putting the larger number first as the minuend and using it as the subtrahen. See? That's what they're called in subtraction. That's the minuend, that's the subtrahen, and that's the difference. So, whichever one's bigger, put it first so that you get a nice positive number, okay? And we're going to get into positive and negative numbers coming up, all right, when we start getting into the integers and in algebra. So just put the larger number first to subtract to find the difference, okay? So it doesn't matter if it's the original or new amount. Just put the larger number first. The difference is 192. We know it's a 40% decrease, all right? Tala was expected to sell six cartons of candy bars for her school, and each carton contained 18 bars. Now, Tala actually sold 162 candy bars. What percent more did she sell than was expected? So, 
if you look at this, this is in two different forms. Here we've got six cartons of 18 bars each, but then it says she sold 162. So we need to first multiply the six times 18 to find the total of candy bars that she was given and expected to sell so that it's equal and equivalent to this 162 candy bars as an amount because that's not in cartons, that's in separate candy bars. So we do the six times 18 and get 108. So now we know she was given 108 candy bars and was expected to sell them, but she actually sold 162. So she probably went back and said, sold them all, can I have some more to sell, right? So the original amount is 108, the new amount is 162. So because the new amount's bigger, we know it was an increase. We subtract 162 minus 108 and we get 54. We take that 54 and divide it by the original amount, 108, and we get a 0.5. We turn that into a percentage by moving the decimal point and adding a percent sign, and that means she sold 50% more than she was expected to. So that was the percentage increase, okay? So remember the word of is usually followed by the base. If the original amount is 10 and the new amount is 5, what it's saying is what percent decrease is 5 of 10? And see, 10 is the original amount. If the original amount is 10 and the new amount is 12, so it went up, it was an increase, it'll say what percent increase is 12 of 10? And again, of and then the base, see? So usually the word of is followed by whatever the base is, and that could help you. All right. In the previous video, 12b, we had a little section here near the end of the video that we talked about multiplication or division and what you would do in a case like this, depending on the wording of of. OK, so now you should be ready to do the rest of that skill focus on page 141, section C and D, because the previous video was for section A and B. So now you should be able to finish it up if you haven't already. And I hope you do well. I'm going to be learning about interest rates with principal and stuff in these percentages in lesson 13. So our percents are going to be interest rates, all right? And our next video is going to be solving percent problems using mental math, and that's 12D. I'll show you some quick tricks and stuff for using mental math. And of course, all the previous videos that can help you with this lesson are going to be linked in this description. We've got some really good Algebra 1 videos, and then I've even got Grade 7 videos now. See how we're not covering these lower grades anymore? Because as we progress in the GED playlist, we're getting into the upper grades. See that? We're going to skip back here when we get into measurements, but from then on, it's going to just be upper grade level videos to help you, okay? So we have some grade 7 and Algebra 1 videos that will help you aside from the previous ones from this playlist. All right? So practice. Take your time. Make sure you read the questions carefully. Don't try to rush yourself. All right? Give your brain time to think. Mull it over. And I, like I said, I hope you do well in that skill focus. And if you do, I'll see you in the next lesson. If you do have some trouble, then go back. Go back to, like, video 12A and watch it again. OK, or maybe even go back to the lessons in 11 and figure out where you started missing the information. OK, because usually that's what the problem is. If you're having trouble, that means you're missing some information, like you're missing a step on a ladder. OK, you got to have all those rungs on the ladder in order to succeed. OK, I'm proud of you. And don't forget, hit the like button so YouTube knows that my videos are good and they'll put it higher up on the list for other people to find. And you can share it, too, if you liked it. I'll see you next time. Bye.